Hello, we are reaching you live from our news studio in Lagos, Nigeria. Coming up, President Muhammadu Buhari talks tough over the heinous murder of the Adamawa politician. Senate launches large-scale probe into the alleged non-remittance of the 1% stamp duty from 2010 to 2020. Cross River State Governor Ben Agade cites four commissioners other aides. Russia vows to send uncomfortable signals to the United States ahead of a summit. Thanks for joining us and here are our stories we are tracking others are I'm Michael Nath. The Senate has launched a large-scale probe into the alleged non-remittance of the 1% stamp duty on contracts awarded by the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation from 2010 to 2020. The Committee on Finance, which is currently probing the internal revenue generation of all the ministries, departments and agencies of government, has therefore summoned the management of the NNPC to appear before it on Tuesday. A source in the panel said the decision was taken following the inability of the NNPC to present convincing evidence of stamp duty remittances to the Federation account since 2010. The source added the decision was actually taken at the last sitting of the finance panel when the chairman, Senator Solomon Adeola, expressed displeasure over the development. Adeola had told the NNPC chief financial officer, Umar Ajia, who represented the management of the session, that the committee was not satisfied with the corporation's submission on the 1% stamp duty remittances. Ajila, however, pleaded with the panel to give him time to make fresh submission on the stamp duty remittances to the panel. Adeola therefore requested details of the total revenue that accrued to the NNPC on stamp duty reduction uh, from 2010 to 2020, including the corresponding expenditure. Cross River State Governor Ben Ayade has sacked four commissioners from his cabinet. The special advisor to the governor on media and publicity, Christian Nita, announced this in a statement on Monday in Calabar, the state capital. The affected commissioners are Mike Usibe, a new city development, Rita Ayim, Women Affairs, Asu Okang, Information, and Ntufam, a team climate change. Governor Ayade also relieved five other appointees, Liu Yangbe, Orok Duke, Victor Okon, John Bass, and Mbe Agbije of their appointments. While no reason was given for the governor's action, he thanked the affected commissioners and appointees for their services to the state and wished them well in their future endeavors. President Muhammad Buhari has expressed outrage and disgust over what he called the heinous murder of Adamawa politician Ahmed Gulak in Oweri by yet-to-be-identified gunmen. The president reacted in a statement issued by his senior special assistant on media and publicity, Malam Garba Shehu. Buhari expressed deep condolences to the family of the deceased, the people and government of Adamawa, as well as Gulag's friends and associates across the country. The president, however, warned that nobody or group of people who engages in such a despicable act should expect to go free. The Enugu State Police Command on Monday said it has launched a manhunt for the killers of former Enugu State High Court Judge Justice Stanley Naji. Justice Naji was reportedly killed by gunmen suspected to be as a saint Sunday evening. A statement by the Enugu State Police Command, however, could not identify the victim as a former judge. The statement signed by command spokesman Daniel Ndukwe quoted the commissioner to have assured that no stone would be left unturned in fishing out perpetrators of the heinous crime. The PPRO, however, appealed to residents of the state to remain law-abiding, vigilant and assist the police with useful information that would lead to the arrest and prosecution of the assailants. The Pan-Northern Socio-Political Organization Ariwa Consultative Forum is worried over the endless killings by gunmen in Benue State. 
the ACF National Publicity Secretary Manuel Yawe made this known in a statement released in Kaduna on Sunday. The statement reads in part, We at the ACF are worried about the rampant loss of life in Benue and the seemingly desperate attempts by the state government to twist the narrative for political reasons and the security agencies who are not giving accurate accounts of the security situation in Benue for reasons that are difficult to see. About six persons were injured while traders and motorists scampered for safety after a substance suspected to be a dynamite exploded at the popular Mile 3 Park in Port Harcourt River State on Monday. Residents of the area said they heard a loud sound about 6.20 a.m. when traders were bringing in their goods and other openings uh, for business. The explosion occurred at the dry fish section of the park. And the confusion that ensued, the persons who are sev uh, severely injured and uh, while scores, mostly uh, women, suffered various degrees of injuries. The injured have been rushed to a nearby hospital. It could not be immediately ascertained what could have led to the explosion of those behind it. Now, streets in Omaha, the Abia state capital, are virtually empty and deserted as residents remain indoors in total compliance of the sit-at-home order given by the leadership of the indigenous peoples of Biafra, IPOP, to mark this year's Biafra Day. Unless previous, unlike previous years, when the exercise recorded partial compliance in the Umaya, where the IPOB leader Mazi Namdikanu hails from, the capital city was completely shut down. As at 9 a.m., when our correspondent moved around some streets to monitor the situation and level of compliance, the streets were still empty. At all shops in the street, without any exception, were under lock and key. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has lamented over Sunday's attack on its office in Njaba, local government area of Imo State, the eight officers, to be attacked in the state since the 2019 general election. INEC National Commissioner and Chairman of its Information and Voter Education Committee, Festus Sukoye, in a statement, said the incident has been reported to the police for investigation. Part of the statement reads, quote, although no life was lost, the building was substantially burnt down, along with electoral materials, office equipment and furniture, end of quote. The attack is coming exactly a week after our office in Ehiazu, BC, local government area of the state, was vandalized on Sunday, 23rd of May, 2021. It is also the eighth INEC office to be attacked in Imo State since the 2019 general election. The total number of INEC offices attacked nationwide since 2019 has now risen to 42. Now, detachments of policemen have been drafted to quell possible protests as members of the Tricycle Association guided en masse to stage a protest today following death of one of their own, allegedly killed by armed herdsmen in Makurdi Naka Road. The tank claimed five, including the tricycle rider, with four others injured. The state chairman of the association, Comrade Bernard Orban, described the death of their member, who is in his state late 20s and popularly known as AB, as painful and sad. My driver is always carrying me anywhere I want to go. I'll call him, come and carry me. He just came, we talked from village yesterday. Here, his mother has an accident. And uh, personally, when he came that very afternoon, there was a charter for him to go to Naka. And uh, he has to go. On his way coming back, there were two. On his way coming back, these Fulani men, they attacked them, they killed him. The other one escaped. That one is, they shot him on the bed, but he managed to escape. The Nigeria Immigration Service has warned officers to stop making payment and filing or filling of personal data. Uh, on behalf of applicants or face punishment. The Controller General of Nice, Mohamed Ban 
Baba Dede uh, while giving update of the NIS passport issuance and recruitment process reveals that after an intensive investigation, it discovered that some officers use their mobile number and make payment on behalf, on behalf of uh, applicants. We are conducting an audit inspection uh, to find out uh, common numbers. It's very easy. Common numbers coming up on passport application. We know that it is done by officers. Those officers will be dealt with and punished, including payment. Uh, in the new regime, there will be apps, lunch for payment, where you can make payment with your handset. But now we realize a lot of payments are made by the same per person, uh, which means there is an insider dealing with some people who are making payment on behalf of applicants, which we would not accept. When we wanted to invite people for computer-based examination, we invited 75,000. What we did was we looked at each state, each local government, each local government was invited in the country. Each local government. We took 10%, as we explained to 10% best in each state from the exam. Not 10% for the country. Uh, 10 best in each state as merit and invited them. Then we put the next in each local government. So each local government was invited. A former vice president and one-time PDP presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar said Governor Fintry of Adamawa State has performed well within two years in office amidst the dwindling economic, economic crisis there. Atiku Abubakar disclosed this today in Yola during the commissioning of flyover at a total filling station junction to mark two years of Governor Fintry in office. In the face of dwindling resources and against competing demands for discussed resources, he was able to undertake this gigantic project. History will forever remember your visionary leadership and will allocate a special place for you to eternity. This is one of our packages for the Adamo Renewal Campaign. We hope to sustain this campaign at this pace or even at most speed strive until all our urban centers and semi-urban centers wear a befitting look not only for aesthetics but for the comfort and convenience of our teaming populace and visiting visit investors. The plan is carefully crafted policy which aims to raise the standard of our state capital to attract investors to the state and equally to improve the infrastructural status of our semi-urban centers. Away from the state capital, we have sensibly selected a number of semi-urban centers for infrastructural facilities. A group known as Center for Water and Environment Development has urged parents to educate female wards on menstrual health and hygiene to enable them know what to do when they are experiencing menstruation for the first time. A project manager disclosed this today in Yola during the celebration of Menstrual Hygiene Day celebrated globally on 28th of May 2021. The project manager Doris Akama said it is pertinent for the awareness of the female wards in order to reduce the rates at which young girls always fall a victim on the first day of menstruation. Fathers, that's mm. the parents, and that's why if you see in our program is we invite boys, mm. we so that we catch them young. But eventually they become fathers. If the mother will be shine, at least the father will be able to tell the mother, "Have you educated this your child? Have you prepared this your girl child before her first period?" And mostly they start from age nine. So the essence of the program so that. They will also go and tell their parents that today we had a program on menstrual hygiene or menstrual talk or what we call girls talk. Yeah. So by the time they start breaking the silence, them, the, the girl child to their parents or to their mother, the mother, the mother now will now know that the things I felt shy about and this my daughter is talking about, let me just open up and let's agree to talk about it in a wider mode. Okay. 
The Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board has given two weeks extension to candidates genuinely unable to complete their registration for the 2021 Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination, UTME. A statement by JAMS Head of Information and Protocol, Dr. Fabian Benjamin, noted that such candidates have between May the 31st and June the 15th to complete their registration if they were not able to do so by last Saturday because of a need verification issuance uh, using in a new gen genuine guideline. You're watching news now and we'll take a break now and come back with more after this break. Stay with us. looks command respect they say the perfect body the perfect grooming and ultimately the perfect skin looks style and grooming makes the ultimate man found a ridiculously easy way to make my skin always feel epic. My name is Neo, I found Blemiviv and now my skin finally makes sense. You're watching News Now here on iBrand TV Lagos. African News Now. Chad's Defense Ministry on Sunday said troops of neighboring Central African Republic CAR had attacked a Chadian military post, killing one soldier and kidnapping and ex executing five others. Actions, it said, amounted to a war crime. The heavily armed assailants struck in the early hours of Sunday, attacking a post manned by 12 Chadian soldiers near Chad's 1,000-kilometer border with CAR, the ministry said in a statement. Chad's embassy in Dakar, the CAR capital of Bangui, was told by the head of CAR's military police to collect the bodies of the five soldiers executed by CAR forces, it said. This extremely serious war crime and this a premeditated murderous attack planned and carried out within Chad cannot go unpunished, it said. There was no immediate response to the allegations from the Central African Republic, which has been racked in uh, instability uh, since a 2013 rebellion ousted uh, former uh, President Francois Bozizé. Now, South Africa has extended its nightly curfew and limited the number of people at gatherings to slow the spread of COVID-19 as positive cases surge, President Cyril Ramaphosa said on Sunday. The level two uh, lockdown restrictions will start on Monday, forcing non-essential establishments like restaurants, bars and fitness centers to close by two 22.00 hour local time as the curfew will now start at 23.00 hour from midnight and end at 04.00 hour and Ramaphosa said in an address to the nation. All gatherings will be limited to a maximum of 100 people indoors from 250 and 250 people outdoors from 500 where the venue is too small to accommodate these numbers no more than 50% of the capacity of the venue may be used. Ramaphosa said according to the country's health experts, the recent surge in new infections is due to the increase, uh, increasing number of social gatherings where people are not observing essential health protocols. 
Foreign News Now, Turkey and Greece will start taking concrete steps and working on joint projects to improve economic and commercial ties. Turkish Foreign Minister Mevlut Kovuzlu-Soglu said after talks at Athens uh, and, uh, at the NATO members uh, seek to repair ties. Tensions flared last year over a dispute over maritime jurisdiction and offshore rights in the eastern Mediterranean and the countries traded barbs on Sunday over the status of Muslim minorities in Greece. Speaking at a news conference with, uh, with his great, uh, great counterpart, Nikos uh, Dendias in Athens, Kofus Soglu uh, said they reached an understanding on 25 articles in, to improve commercial ties and both countries would recognize each other's COVID-19 vaccinations in a move to help tourism. Russia said on Monday it will send what it described as uncomfortable signals to the United States ahead of a summit between the two countries' leaders next month and announced it was beefing up its western border militarily. The comments came a day after U.S. President Joe Biden said he would press Russian President Vladimir Putin to respect human rights when the two leaders meet in Geneva on June the 16th. Relations between the two powers are a post-Cold War lows. Uh, Sergei Ryabkov, uh, Russia's deputy foreign minister, was quoted as saying that by the IIA news agency that the Americans must assume that a number of signals from Moscow will be uncomfortable for them, including in the coming days. Ryabkov Kov said Russia would be prepared to respond to Biden's queries about human rights in Russia and said that Moscow was being more flexible than Washington when it comes to drawing up an agenda for the summit. Now, China on Monday relaxed its two-child policy to allow couples to have three children, a shift aimed at tackling an aging society. Here is a timeline of the country's involving family planning policy. In 1979, China imposed a policy forcing couples to have only one baby, introduced by top leader Deng Xiaoping to curb population growth and boost economic development in the country. The population stood at 969 million that year, a sharp increase from around 540 million in 1949. The decades under the family planning move led to the under-reporting of female births, as well as a high rate of abortions of female fetuses, uh, skewing the sex ratio. You're watching business news now now the national uh, information technology development agency has warned about a new cyber threat that involves email based attacks by a notorious russian hacking group called nobelium this warning was contained in a press statement on sunday by the agency's head of corporate affairs and external relations uh, hadiza uma titled uh, nitda cautious Nigerians on new email-based attack from uh, solar wind hackers. All right. Earlier, Microsoft had warned about the cyber attacks, which are said to originate from the state-backed Russian hackers behind the solar winds hacking agency against the United States and foreign government agencies and think tanks. About 3,000 email accounts at over 150 organizations were targeted, especially organizations involving international development, humanitarian and human rights work. The Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation has committed to supply crude oil to a refinery project on Tomaro Island in Lagos with a capacity of 20,000 barrels per day. Integrated Oil and Gas Limited, the promoters of the Eco uh, Petroleum uh, petrochemical and uh, refinery company disclosed this on Saturday, saying it has spent over $20 million on the project. The chairman, chief executive officer, Integrated Oil and Gas Limited, Emmanuel Hianacho, who noted that the company got a grant of $797, uh, $343. In 2017, from the United States Trade and Development Agency for the project, said it would cost $200 million to build it. The delegation, led by the director upstream at the ministry, Busari Kamaru, 
visited the company to ascertain the progress made so far on the project and the challenges facing it. The increasing cost of servicing debt continues to weigh on the federal government's revenue profile, a PWC report has said. This report was titled Nigeria Economic Alert Assessing the 2021 FGE and Budget. According to the report, the federal government keeps spending a huge amount of its revenue to service debt, and the debt to revenue ratio in 2020 is about 83 percent. It said actual debt servicing costs in 2020 stood at 3.27 trillion naira and represented about 10 percent over the budgeted amount of 2.95 trillion naira. This puts the debt to revenue ratio at approximately 83 percent, nearly double the 46 percent that was budgeted. We'll take a break now and bring you sports news with Jidechi. Welcome to the Sports Update. I am Jide Chichi the Asia. Now, Argentina's co-hosting of the Copa America football tournament has been suspended in view of the current circumstances. This, according to Comebo on Sunday, as the country endures a record coronavirus surge. Now, the South American football body, which last week stripped Colombia of co-hosting duties over the deadly unrest, said it was considering other offers to hold the tournament. The Copa America was originally due to take place last year but was postponed for 12 months because of the coronavirus pandemic. Officials are expected to meet on Monday to decide the next move for the hosting tournament. An Argentine poll published on Friday found that most respondents were against holding the tournament as the country experiences its worst phase of the pandemic so far. Only 20% believed the championship should hold on Argentine soil while 10% we are undecided. Now, in other stories, Eddie Hearn has said Anthony Joshua won't be told what to do by the governing bodies in being ordered to fight particular fighters such as Alexander Usyk. Now, matchroom boxing promoter Hearn said Joshua may take Usyk, who has 18 wins, 13 knockouts, but he also may vacate the WBO belt if it doesn't make business sense for them. Meanwhile, Anthony Joshua is convinced that Tyson Fury's team never believed promoter Eddie Hearn would secure their £150 million undisputed fight and set him up as a scapegoat. Joshua and Fury had agreed on a deal to fight in Saudi Arabia on August the 14th, but when the Otto Wilder's arbitration case ruled in favor of a Fury Wilder trilogy fight, they both had to pursue other opponents. Now, Joshua is expected to fight his mandatory challenger, Alexander Usyk, towards the end of the summer with Fury's trilogy with Wilder penciled in for July the 14th in Las Vegas. And that's all for now on the Sports Update. Back to you, Michael. Thank you so much, Judici. And with those sports reports, we'll wrap up the news here on News Now on Ibrand TV Lagos. Thanks very much for watching. I am Michael Nas.